North Congregational United Church of Christ in Columbus, Ohio. He and 12 other pastors have filed this latest complaint with the IRS. Pastor Williams, thanks very much for joining us again. Oh, glad to. Uh, as I just mentioned, the IRS was pretty tight-lipped with us today when we spoke to them about these allegations. Uh, has, has your group heard back from them at all, or do you expect to? We did hear back uh, after the initial complaint, and it was a standard letter saying they received our concerns and would look into it if, it if it merited, and if we have any further concerns to forward those, and really that's what this second letter is, a supplement to our original complaint. These allegations of, of potential tax violations, potential ethics violations are very serious charges. Uh, with the exception of, of Congressman Doyle and Senator Coburn, none of these current or former residents of C Street, um, at least to us, have yet come forward to try to clear their names. Um, have any of them tried to come to you to clear their names? Do you expect that they, that they can or that they will? Um, I've had no contact from any of them, and quite frankly, I would be pleasantly surprised if they did read it, reach out to us. Your complaint um, makes a pretty detailed case, appears to be a pretty solid case, that these members of Congress are playing way, way below market value rent. Is the tax-exempt right. status of C Street as a purported church relevant to the way that you think these congressmen and senators may have been evading taxes here? I, I think that goes right to the heart of it. Because this boarding house uh, is purportedly a church, there's no opportunity to look at their finances. There's no obliga uh, obligation to do any reporting. Therefore, you know, quite frankly, I don't know if, if, the, if the members of Congress even paid any rent at all. And, uh, and the subsidy, was it a gift that was given? Uh, was it imputed income? We don't know anything like that. All we can do is ask the questions and ask the IRS to compel us, uh, C Street Center and the, uh, the members of Congress uh, to comply. We'd like to know. We would like to know. When Congressman Doyle and, and Senator Coburn told us today that they didn't receive any subsidized rent, um, I, as you heard me describe, neither one of them willing to elaborate particularly on that claim. It may be that members of Congress were in the dark and thought that rent was super cheap in Washington and they didn't know they were getting a subsidy. Does, does that seem possible to you? Well, uh, that's a far stretch, if possible at all. As far as I know, Sea Tree Center is the only boarding house uh, in steps away from work that offers this kind of uh, luxurious housing. So I would think anyone who was staying there would certainly understand they were getting a pretty sweet deal. This was a special relationship they had with this boarding house. To that point, I mean, aside from whether these members of Congress were accurate with the IRS and, 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 and accurate in terms of their disclosure forms with Congress, if you think they were aware of getting this sweetheart deal, and it seems conceivable that they did, I don't think any of them are dummies and thought that this is what everybody else was paying in rent, are you concerned about access, influence, uh, other forms of quid pro quo with whoever was subsidizing them and what they may have been expecting in return? Well, I can't believe that uh, they were getting uh, subsidized housing because they had a financial need. They make quite a bit of money, $174,000. Uh, so it wasn't a gift just to help them uh, meet, meet ends. So I have to, have to think that they were receiving a favor with some kind of expectation. Uh, and, and, of course, the whole family uh, code of secrecy uh, really suggests that there was a lot of conversation, private conversation, private influence going on well below the radar and have to think all these members who were enjoying the favors of staying at Sea Street Center were involved in that kind of communication. Reverend Eric Williams, senior pastor at North Congregational United Church of Christ in Columbus, Ohio. Um, I guess thank you for your continued vigilance on this subject. I have a feeling it's not going to be the last time I talk to you about this. Uh, and thanks for your time. We'll stay tonight, on sir. it. You bet. Appreciate it. Thank you. During the show last night, we were able to report on the arrest of the ninth suspected member of a terroristic militia group who was allegedly planning an attack on law enforcement officers and planning to wage war against the United States government. Police say Joshua Matthew Stone was hiding inside a rural Michigan home when police played messages over a loudspeaker from his family and friends urging him to surrender. He did so peacefully. Mr. Stone was arraigned today. So here are all nine of the alleged militia members who have been arrested and now indicted. One of the nine is a man named Christopher Sickles. According to the federal indictment against him, Mr. Sickles also goes by the name Pale Horse. He appears to have made a pretty overt, traceable footprint online over time. As the rest of the militia movement and the right-wing anti-government fringe in this country tries to distance itself from this Hutari militia and these people who've been arrested... 
we don't actually just have to take their word from it. Some of the evidence is available, open source, uh, online for anyone to see. To that end, uh, I want to show you a bit of a video that was reportedly posted online in October 2008. This is just before the 08 election. And it was posted online by an Ohio militiaman who called himself Pale Horse. It's since been taken down, but here's an excerpt of it that was uh, played on Ed Schultz's show last year. Hello, America. It's your wake up call from the Ohio militia. The people need to wake up. Start buying some of these, see? Ask yourself, why do you not have one of these? Go out and buy a gun, okay? They're not that expensive, okay? You can get a gun. Buy lots and lots of ammo for these guns, okay? Southern Poverty Law Center is a group that monitors militias and extremist groups. They took note of that video and others that were posted uh, to the now defunct Ohio militia website back in April of last year. They noticed that one of those videos included a shout out from the Ohio militia to the Michigan militia. Quote, thanks for letting us train at Camp Stasa with you guys. Camp Stasa thought to be a Michigan militia training ground. Now, when the Hutari suspects were all rounded up and arrested over the weekend and last night, all the other militia movements rushed to distance themselves from this group of people who was being hauled off to jail. But even amid the militia movement's rush to declare, those arrested guys don't have anything to do with us, even amid that rush came an admission from the spokesman for the Southeast Michigan Volunteer Militia that the Hutari trained with them on at least a couple of occasions. So you're getting a sense of the connections here, right? This guy, Christopher Pale Horse Sickles, gets arrested as a member of Hutari. He has an online record in which he appears to be the man describing himself as being associated with the Ohio militia. He connects himself and is connected by other militia members in that state to Michigan militias. Now, Michigan militias have a heck of a history. In 2005, this decade, 2005, a Michigan militia member named Norman David Somerville was sentenced for possessing and distributing more than a dozen machine guns. In 2003, a Michigan state trooper was shot and killed in a standoff with a Michigan militia member named Scott Woodring, who was himself fatally shot by troopers a week later. A Michigan militia member named Paul Darland was convicted in 2001 of the fatal shooting of another militia member's bodyguard. And, of course, most infamously, Terry Nichols, a Michigan native, and Timothy McVeigh attended at least one Michigan militia event before the Oklahoma City bombing. Even the Michigan militia folks admit to that. What else is this pale horse guy known for online? Watch this short clip and, and see if this rings a bell. Here's my idea. We have a one million man armed militia man march on Washington. A peaceful demonstration of at least a million. Hey, if we can get 10 million, even better. But at least 1 million armed militiamen marching on Washington. A peaceful demonstration. No shooting. No one gets hurt. Just a demonstration. The only difference from any typical demonstration is we will all be armed. That again is the man identifying himself as Pale Horse, who we think but cannot confirm, uh, is the same Pale Horse who was arrested this weekend as a member of the Hutari militia and accused of plotting an assault on police officers and to wage war against the United States government. That's a man calling himself Pale Horse, calling for a million militiaman armed march on Washington. He wants people to show their weapons, bring their firearms to Washington, D.C. for a march on the Capitol. Does that idea sound familiar at all? Of course, Pale Horse's armed march on Washington didn't happen. He was calling for it to take place on July 4th of last year. Instead, though, an armed march in, on Washington is, is going to happen this year, on April 19th, on the anniversary, the 15th anniversary of the bombing of the Oklahoma City Federal Building by Timothy McVeigh. How did we come to know about this current planned armed march on Washington? Or, or march on as close as these people think they could legally get to Washington? We found out about it because the guy who's calling for people to throw bricks through Democratic Party headquarters around the country, a former militia leader from Alabama, is a keynote speaker at the Armed March on Washington event. I can already feel the common wisdom congealing around this story, that these militia members who were arrested were part of some offshoot, unique, standalone religious cult that has nothing to do with anything else that's going on in the world of anti-government extremism in this country right now. But if you just scratch the surface of the story, just barely scratch it, that common wisdom falls apart. Joining us now is Dave Nywer.